is Lightroom's AI denoise tool all it's cracked up to be? In this video, I'm gonna show you why it may not be everything it's promised to be, but I will show you how to use it best coming up. Hey, what's up guys? My name is David Johnson. On this channel, I help you improve your landscape photography, plus show you how to improve your editing, just like in this video. So if you're into that, subscribe to this channel below and hit the notification bell. Let's jump right into this. So I thought this would be a great image to share with you on how to use this tool because as you can see, it is an ISO of 1250, which is a pretty high ISO. Typically anything over 800 is what I'm gonna use denoise on because over 800, your ISO starts to put some graininess, also called noise, into your photos. And that's what this denoise tool is doing. There's always been a manual denoise tool that's basically like a slider, but now Lightroom is promising that this new AI feature is going to find your AI noise better and improve it a little bit better too. So let's dive in and see exactly how it works. So if I just come down here into my details window, I'm going to hit denoise noise reduction, and that's going to bring up this extra window for me that'll show me a close up view of how it's denoising this. Now, on the right side, it's also going to give us a slider of how much we want to apply that denoise into our photo, which is very similar to how you would do it manually. So, basically, what I like to do is go over here and come down to about 30. I think that's a pretty good denoise. That's about the max I would go on the manual version of how it used to be. And then it gives us an estimated time and also a create stack here. Now, I think it's important to mention that when you do hit enhance, go, denoise, AI, do your thing, that it creates a separate DNG file for you to use instead of just using the original file. So I'm just gonna hit enhance and it's gonna go do its thing and we'll jump back in when it's finished. So once that file is done, here's what it looks like. I can zoom in on this and take a closer look at how the denoise has worked. And it looks like it's worked really, really well for an ISO of 1250. I mean, that's a pretty high ISO. It looks clean. It looks like it sharpened it a little bit too. So I'm really happy with those results. As you can see, the F7 kind of blurred out that tree a little bit. So that's slightly out of focus. But, you know, is this better than the previous version? I would say yes, a little bit, but I think the overhype of this tool is kind of its downfall. So what do I mean by that? Well, I think there's a right way to use this tool and a best way to use this tool because not everything always has to be completely denoised and noise removed out of it because sometimes it can make the images look a little bit fake, especially for night photography. Now, how do I think this could be used best? What you could do with this is actually use something like a night photo and use both the original version with a little bit of noise and the denoise version and mask in the denoise version for the sky and leave a little bit of noise in the foreground and the rocks or whatever you're photographing with the Milky Way night sky or whatever you're shooting for your foreground element. I think doing it that way would remove enough of the sky noise in that photo to really make it look good. Now, where does this rank among tools? I still think Topaz is probably the highest effective rate on removing noise and the easiest. So if you have Topaz or if you don't, you know, you can really use that to make the best denoising in your photos. I would put this slightly below Topaz. It works really well, but there are some really great uses, especially for night photography too. Here's some more videos that I think are really going to help your landscape photography too.